Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about a partial lunar eclipse that is happening in Taurus on November 19th with its peak time of 12.57 a.m. and that's for Pacific Standard Time. I'm sorry guys, this lunar eclipse Look, we have a lot of energies in play and I am nervous, so I'm not going to waste any more time and let's just get right into it. Okay, as always, I have to preface with do not do any manifestation on eclipses in general, but for this one, I beg of you, please do not do anything. Um, the energies are too chaotic from our luminaries, both the sun and the moon. They're not working properly. They're not working with the energies that we're used to on a regular full, full or new moon. Um, so it's important that we just sit back, let these energies flow like they're meant to flow, and we just receive our messages, reflect, journal, meditate, release, all that good stuff, but just don't actively manifest. Okay, first of all, we have Mars in Scorpio, who is opposite Uranus and Taurus retrograde. Now keep your cool, keep your cool, keep your cool, keep your cool, because Mars opposite Uranus indicates usually outburst, um, especially with Mars being so hot headed and so direct and impulsive, um, depending on where this these planets are transiting your chart and how they're aspecting each other and planets in your chart it can translate into any area of life. It can be you're aggressive with yourself, you can be aggressive with friends, with um, your family, with your partner, with your co-workers. Um, so this, it just very much speaks to impulsive lash outs and unexpected lash outs or attacks from both the giving and receiving end. Um, so try to take a breath every time someone like tries your shit and just Tell yourself that you got this because we'll be on the same boat. Next up, we have Mars and Scorpio, Sextile, Venus, and Capricorn. Now, I like this because I feel like it brings a little chill to Mars, um, especially Mars opposite Uranus, as Venus is one of the benefics. It is in Capricorn, so it is a little bit more like rigid because it is an earth sign but it's still grounding it still helps to like keep it cool a little bit calm out the mars the hot mars energy so we can lean into more of like this playful explorative energy and just try to surround yourself with people who understand how to handle you um sometimes i mean we're all human and we can't really control lash outs sometimes so just try to surround yourself with people that will know how to keep your cool and will know how to ground you and not kind of be like, well, why are you acting like that? Instead of just be like, yo, maybe we should just like, I don't know, go take a walk or something like that. Next up, we do have Venus in Capricorn, which is going to be trying Uranus and Taurus retrograde. Now this all comes full circle because these three planets, Mars, Venus, and Uranus are kind of in communication with each other, aspecting each other. Like one of them is having an abrasive communication. The other one is having like a more harmonious and this one's having like, a, okay, we can do this. So all in all, I think these energies can be manageable, but um, anything related to Uranus is going to be unexpe unexpected, shocking, um, disruptive, again, whether that's for good or for bad. So it kind of depends on personal situations. This aspect can bring both grounding and disruption at the same time. Um, but on one side, it can get you out of the box with things that you might have neglected or felt like you weren't really down with or appropriate for, um, or you think didn't benefit you or were too small for you. But it might come from like an unexpected connection, unexpected opportunity. So just stay open and stay grounded. Um, and, uh, Stay woke. Just kidding. Don't. Uh. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, then we have Mercury and Scorpio, which is going to be square, Jupiter and Pisces. Um, the squares usually indicate tension and friction, but they can be beneficial sometimes because friction creates fire, which creates fuel and passion and life. Um, so if we are detail oriented, we can make the best out of this 
aspect. Um, oftentimes Jupiter focuses much on the big picture and leaves out small details that might be really important and really crucial to building things. So that's where Mercury comes in. Uh, Mercury in Scorpio, very meticulous, very detective vibes, very like, if it is wrong, I will find it. Even if it's as small as a grain of sand, they will find it. Um, so make sure, I mean, even though you shouldn't be doing anything if you are releasing something because it is a lunar eclipse, so you can release. Um, and make sure you're releasing the right things and not just being like, Mah. okay. Last but not least, we have Mercury in Scorpio, Trine, Neptune in Pisces, who is retrograde. Now, overall, this is my favorite aspect out of this eclipse mess um, because it helps stimulate our mind. It helps stimulate our creativity and our spirituality um, and also our communication. So this can help not only cool, cool off uh, the combative energy that we have with Mars, but you can also, we can use this energy to help us meditate, relax, and just kind of dive deep into our own minds to discover new information. All right, you guys, Whew, I feel like I just ran a marathon. Um, I kid you not, I was preparing this breakdown and I was internally kind of hurt, but it's okay. It's okay. It's just another day. Um, we're going to pull a card and see what support we can have for this partial lunar eclipse in Taurus, um, this time around. Let's see. Ooh, okay. All right. I see a sun card. Kill. Um, we have the sun card and we have, uh, the fifth house. So... Sun, obviously the center of our freaking solar system, the vitality, the life, what brings you life, what makes you wake up every morning, what makes you want to be you, what makes you confident, what makes you feel alive, um, and contrary, what doesn't make you feel alive, what dims your light who is not there to support you and be a supporting role in your life because it's your life you're the star let's not be liars okay um we 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 have to care about ourselves we have to feed that fire inside of us because otherwise we can't take care of other people we can't do shit for ourselves or other people um so really think about that really think about that and then we have the fifth house fifth house is here to play it's uh romance it's creativity it's your inner child it is your children too if you have kids maybe this means you can go have a nice day with your kid and just let them play connect with your inner child as well um do activities that your inner child likes um it's funny because uh i I was recording other videos for um, the rest of the year and the fifth house came up in another video I did. This is the last video I'm doing because I'm telling you guys I was stressed about this. But anyway, um, the fifth house also came up, I think, in the full moon in Gemini at the end of the year. So a little preview of that. So tap into that energetic um, child energy. Tap into that romantic energy. Take yourself out for a date or go indulge with your boo, your partner, um, your best friend like do things that are gonna fuel your creativity and your desire to be here and to live life and not live life like work and eat and sleep like a robot but really like what do I enjoy doing a bike ride um journaling writing songs even if they fucking suck writing poetry screaming at the top of your lungs whatever it is I really want you to do it. I really want you to indulge yourself in things that pleasure you and things that are going to make you feel really good because we're going to need it. Winter is coming. <laughs> Just do it, you guys. Um, crystals to recommend. I'm going to recommend two crystals, both sunstone and moonstone. We're working with these energies anyway. Um, we're working with the luminaries at their most chaotic point, basically, when they're in an eclipse. Um, so we want these two stones to help us balance and ground those energies correctly. Um, and as I always say, let the energies flow. Please reflect, journal, meditate, relax by any by any means, by all means, do all that. Um, just make sure you're not actively manifesting anything out unless you're ready to deal with the consequences that will come back time stand I say consequences they can be good or bad don't take my word for it if you know what you're doing you know what you're doing 
don't let me tell you otherwise. For events for this partial lunar eclipse in Taurus, make sure to check out the description below. We have linked some awesome events that you can do. Uh, you can participate either live stream or in person, whichever is best for you. I'm gonna recommend a book. I started reading this book and I still have not gone through it, but it's a very interesting and very awesome book. And since we can't do anything because it's eclipse season, we have time to read. Um, it's Cosmos and Psyche by Richard Harness. Um, this is kind of like the perfect mix of astrology and kind of astronomy because it, it just kind of explains astrology from a more logical, grounded, um, point of view with numbers and cycles and everything and it's just really nice and and um, it's one of the most known books in astrology um, if you want to become an astrologer or learning astrology I highly recommend you add this to your reading list I'll leave a link down below in the description box so you can get it all right guys that is it for this partial lunar eclipse in Taurus we're fine we're gonna make it we've been through worse been through worse um as always if you need us you can email us call us um dm us at the shop we're always here with your spiritual needs um hoping everybody's happy and healthy other than that i'm sending everybody much love many many blessings and have a great lunar eclipse <laughs>